Our whole CWL comes down to this one attack. Here's the situation, guys. It's War 7. About 20 minutes left. We have one attack. It's Chad. If we three-star this attack, we win our CWL and get promoted. The top clan just did their final attack of the week. As you see here, they're going to win their war. Where's that? Right here. Yeah, Clash Factory. They're going to win their war. But if Chad three-stars this attack, not only will we win this war, we already got the war won, but we will tie them on stars, and if you look at the percent and add 100 to it, that'll put us at 89.47 compared to their 89.09, so we would win the group. So it all comes down to this. Chad's making his final preparations. Let's see what he's got. All right, guys, Chad is in. Let's see if he's going with this patented Super Archer Loons. Yep, Rocket Loons. All right, this is his go-to attack. This is what he's good at. Hopefully, he picked this base and is good to go i'm worried uh remember it's three star bust two star does nothing for us unfortunately Ooh, that sweeper barely missed him but it does miss that's good uh, he's gonna have to go past this other poison tower oh wait no he's gonna drop right here okay that's fine uh he can get lots of value here he can get all three multis potentially at least two multis and definitely the uh eagle artillery and then i feel like uh maybe the poison tower over there by the town hall uh, that RC is kind of distracting a little bit. All right, he's got one more invis. Let's see where the archers go. Okay, they don't get the poison tower. And they're not going to go get the multi, but they might get that bow, which will be nice. Uh, he's got the warden. Actually, the warden works out and gets the dragon taken out there. So the warden's actually going to clean up. He's going to go ahead and start the queen from this far side over here. He'll bring in the electro titan. All right, Chad, it's all or nothing. I will say I'm a little bit worried about this entry because he's leaving up both scatters and the queen. I get what, I get going and getting the town hall out. I 100% I get that. But leaving that for the back end could be tough. All right, baby dragon, electro titan, get down the lava hound, no issues there. He's got his barbarian king working in here. He will have diggy for the back end, so that'll be nice. Got to keep an eye on this mono. The monolith's going to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, let's see, does it lock onto the golem there? Yeah, Monolith locks onto the golem, so that's definitely what he wants. His king's going to circle in there, take out the enemy king. Poison Tower did throw over there to the Titan. Titan's going to go ahead and distract for a little bit here at the Town Hall. All right, Mono's fine. Ice Golem freezes. He's got one invis left here. He's got a lot of base. Here comes that Royal Champ from the top side. Rocket Loon's into support. Okay, the uh, Skeleton's going to pop up there, which is fine. Oh, no, guys. I'm a little bit worried about it. I'm a little bit worried about it. See, like, leaving up those scatters to the end is going to be tough for him. Let's see what he can do, though. Let's see. Oh, the enemy queen went down, actually. Wait a second. Wait a second. Enemy queen went down. I was really worried because the enemy queen. They still got three rocket loons. If he uses these right, gets a little bit of pressure off the RC. Oh, if she could have got a throw off there, that would have been massive. King's still going with Phoenix. He's got the RC. Oh, under Invis. Oh, he's going to be just short here. He's going to be just short. Oh, dang it. Oh, that's so tough, man. That, that was a tough way to leave up. Good try for Chad, but realistically, we shouldn't have been in this situation. And we'll talk about all of that here as we recap our CWL week. But unfortunately, we are not going to get promoted this month. So yeah, we stay in Champs 3. Unfortunate, we lose by one star. And we'll talk about that because really... We lost this ourselves. We shot ourselves in the foot. We should have easily got the promotion this month. But we played sloppy and we haven't been putting in the time and effort we should be. And that's the result. That's that's just what happens. As far as the clan goes, uh, pretty solid week from Luki and Hendo. Huge shout outs to those guys because they both ran two accounts for Hendo all week. Lukia for most of the week. Uh, I came in there with 16, but I had a one star. So like I'm not even proud of that 16. Uh, let's take a look at it here, guys. So, we do pretty good this war. No no mistakes there. But as you'll see here, we go to War 1. That's the war we lost, and it was filled with mistakes. Our first war of the week, coming off the mashup madness events, we can use that as an excuse. But we had two one-stars. If we just get one of those to a two-star, it's tough. Liberty with a 49%. 1% you could say we lost this week by. I didn't realize that was a 49%. Post you with the 73. We'll point out some highlights, but I will say the one stars killed us this week. So that's what I'm going to talk about right now. And war number two, we won it. It was close, 32 to 31. Uh, 
did we have a, we didn't have any one stars in that one nice they had one star so so uh, i thought we had one but ap apparently it was just them and war number three a pretty solid war from us as you see here lots of three stars and again we'll talk about these highlights we'll show off some of my favorite attacks make sure you stick around for that but just kind of recapping the wars here war number three or four rather 34 31 really solid war from us we did have one one star in here is this me yeah this was me cb uh took a took an unnecessary risk on that one i was running two accounts for i think six out of the seven wars and and really, I just took an unnecessary risk on that one. I should have changed armies. Uh, war number five, we, we got a little bit sloppy also. 31 stars. We did win it, but I think this is where they... Yeah, they didn't attack and they had a one star. Uh, but Noah had an unfortunate one star there. It happens, man. It happens. And then this war, this war is probably the toughest of the week. Uh, we had one stars from... I had a one star on this one. Skeens, Noah, and myself. A uh, really unfortunate way to go out but that's the way the cookie crumbles like i said we haven't been putting in enough time and effort well i should say i know i haven't been but uh it's it's okay i feel really fine about this even though we didn't get promoted the way we came back and had like those 34 star wars those are pretty good for us now let's talk about some of the good highlights some of the three star attacks of the week and before we get into those three star replays let's take a look at our stats shout out to van for always doing our stats for us if you see here our offense actually did better than our defense so we technically had more stars than we gave up stars which is really really good and our percent was really good as well this month uh looking at three star attacks we had a, a few guys here at three triples myself hendo and lukia always positive along with a couple guys getting two uh steven and noah but one stars are really what killed us this month i had two total one stars uh noah had two posty skeins we already talked about that uh overall though like our defense i felt like our defense was pretty good uh Liberty was the only one to give up more than one triple throughout the week, which is really good for us. So we should have probably got promoted, but it is what it is. We'll come back to it next month. Let's go ahead and let's check out some of these replays. So in War 1, we lost to Clash Factory, who ended up winning the group. But uh, I do like to toot my own horn. You guys know that, right? I mean, I think that's fair. I had the two triples this war, and that's the reason why we're going to highlight this. Big Rock used Super Bowlers, which I use a ton. That's my go-to strat. And honestly, I made some mistakes just forcing Super Bowlers throughout the week. But CB, actually, I used Twin Hogs on this account. This is an attack that I like using on these little like corner teasers, these anti-three-star bases. I feel like it works really well. But also, this base had singles like on the corners here. And I felt really confident with no Rage Tower here in the middle. I felt like the Twin Hog was the proper move here. So again, yeah, I like to toot my own horn. It's my channel! Get over it, guys! But I honestly, I just thought this was just a really good attack selection for this base. I know me personally, and uh, at least one of my one stars was because I got lazy and I just didn't change my army. I didn't change how I attack a base. So uh, this one, I did change my army. I changed up my attack plan, and I, I got rewarded with a triple. So that's why we're highlighting it. Queen goes in here, and she's going to go ahead and take out the town hall and just work through this compartment i like this when you can get like bows and bomb towers like when you have access to all that with the queen charge that's always going to be really good for the twin hogs obviously bomb towers are going to be a nemesis of any hog rider troop so being able to get that down was really nice we're going to go ahead and use the king over here on the opposite side for the funnel i'm going to actually use the battle drill on this i kind of like the battle drill i've been growing on this one it's not something i use a ton but i have started using it a little bit more with this attack it's been really nice we'll sprinkle in a few of those single hogs right there on the outside or regular hogs excuse me and then also a few regular hogs in there just with the twin hogs that's just to keep the hogs working through the middle of the pack and then notice our queen she's doing a good job here i don't really have to manage her too well uh, or too much so she's just working through there warden ability goes off we rage right on through all of this like little power area uh we do take quite a bit of damage but that rage helps us get through and also that battle drill does a great job queen is fine at this point she gets through a lot of that threat that was in there our royal champion is going to go ahead and take out the enemy royal champion we'll go ahead and make her invisible and then we'll use the uh invis to get the royal champion through the mono now this one does get a little bit close here but we still have king up with ability we still have queen up with ability and then we have a few super hogs coming out of that battle drill as it popped right through there so it's enough gas to kind of get us through here and finish this one off again 
we lost this war, but I think this was my best attack selection of the week. I think I had better overkill attacks with the Super Bowler Smash, but uh, changing up a little bit and using something I don't use a ton and I'm not super comfortable with, I was really proud of this one. Also, getting the six pack is pretty cool, right? But let's stop tooting my horn. Let's check out some of the other guys' attacks. Next up, I want to highlight Steven's attack from War 3. Steven's been working on the recall Super Dragons, and on this style base, it does really well. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to try to work through here, take out as much of this as possible with the queen, then you're going to recall her, put her on the other side, take out that stuff, and just send the Super Dragons up the middle. Steven actually had a pretty decent week. I'm pretty sure he had two triples. Uh, he had to miss a war for personal reasons, not like he was doing bad or anything like that. So he did only get six in, but he had a pretty solid week. He's been working on this attack, and I think doing really well with it. So on these style bases, if you're, if you're not sure what to do, this is an attack you can consider. And I wanted to show this off because this is a common style base that you see a lot in Legends and War. These are just very common bases, let's be honest. We, we see these, especially with these double Rage Sours over here. Uh, it can be really annoying, but with the sweepers pointing back this way, if you can get the funnel established, get everything working out, and just uh, get that warden ability right and on time, the queen funnel will be fine. Like, look at this. He's going to rage her up. She's going to just walk down the side, and he's just going to throw in all the super drags here. Uh, there's not too much thinking about it. Just throw in all the super dragons and just crush the base from here. Queen will go ahead and go over there, take out the enemy royal champion, and then he's just going to rage right on through the town hall, use that warden's ability, and then push them a little bit further into the base. You just want the dragons to get as much of this core out as possible. They're going to go ahead and work through that enemy queen. He did a really good job on the funnel on both sides, so he's able to work through here. Dragon out of the clan castle. Look, the queen is still very healthy on the top side, and these dragons are just going to work through here. Now he's going to bring in that king to help out the queen a little bit, just tank a little bit through for her. I like this. The dragons are still going, guys. This is what you're looking for on this attack. It's a really nice one, especially when you have like this little, like it almost like shows you where to funnel on this style base. Like you, you really can't mess it up too much. Uh, all that's really left here is to throw in the royal champion to join the enemy, the other heroes rather, and just clean this one up. King, King still has ability. Queen still has ability. Plenty of cleanup, and this was just really well executed by Steven. Uh, one of his go-to attacks that he's been working on. And it's been paying off for him, especially like on these style bases. In a CWL where you get 15 bases, or if you're lower, you get 30 bases, you can really find one of these and really take advantage of it. I mean, look at this. The Royal Champion comes in, and she's almost swagged out here. That's how crushed this is. So GG to Steven. A pretty nice week for him. He did have to miss that war, but wasn't because he was doing bad or anything. I got taken out because I was doing bad and one starring too much. Hindo was another one that had a really strong week, and he ran two accounts all week, so... Huge props to him for stepping up, running two accounts, helping out the clan. But check this out. He's been using the Super Barch here, the Super Barbarians, the Super Archer Blimp. And he had a really good week. On his main account, he had three triples with it throughout this week. So if you don't know how this works, you're going to run Super Archers inside the Battle Blimp. You're going to go ahead and send them and You're going to make them invisible, rage them, and clone them up. And then you're just going to gut the core of a base here. He does get the clan castle pool. It's a dragon and a lava hound, so he can go ahead and deal with that. But, man, he does a really good job getting so much value. Like, look how much value he got from this base. That is crazy, crazy value. Now, what he does here is he pretty much uses the super barbs to go ahead and set the funnel for the rest of the attack. So he can just send the heroes in. Not really have to worry about managing those barbs, putting in, like, one barb here and there. Which, uh, this can work out really well for you. If you get enough value, you don't have to, like, just, you know, put one barb in here, one barb in there. You can just get away with using those barbs to funnel out and using them early. Uh, and that's what Hendo does here. And you'll see. This one is crushed. You might think, like, oh, my God, he's wasting so many barbs. I can already see the comments. Oh, he wasted so many barbs on that. Why are you showing? No, watch how much he has left on this. Like, he, he swags out hero abilities. This is a really clean attack. Uh, using those barbs just to get that funnel established so that the heroes are going to work up through there. He goes ahead and uses those headhunters right in there to take out the enemy queen. The Electro Titan pops that hound instantly. That's like one of the most satisfying things in Clash, in my opinion, right? When that hound pops and all the pups disappear because there's a Titan there. I love that. I love that way too much. Uh, goes ahead, uses the Royal Champion. She's in there with everything. At this point, like, he really... There's no reason for him not to have everything in. You see that wall breaker? That wall breaker went all the way around that wall and in. Did a really nice job. And then the Royal Champion's just going to follow the King in here. King's going to go ahead and be raged up. So he'll go ahead and break through there and give everyone access. The wall breaker on that top side. 
Just a really well executed attack here from Hendo. When he finds the bases he likes for this and the way he runs it, it does really well. As you see here, he's able to swag out the queen ability. Did do a good job also recognizing that that storage didn't go down, so he puts an archer on it. That way he doesn't risk the time fail. Really good recognition, really good gameplay here from Hendo. So huge shout out to him. Like I said, a really good week. Didn't one star at all. Uh, even though he ran two accounts, he's always a really pretty safe attacker. And even if like the blimp goes sideways or something, he's a really good, does a really good job of like bringing it back and saving the attack. So a nice clean attack from my man Hendo. You guys want to see a really interesting attack? Van coming in here. It's super archers into electro titan smash with with bowlers. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So he's gonna use the battle blimp in here and check this out. He's got a healer inside of his battle blimp. Uh, a little bit risky because you risk cloning that healer. So he's gonna use that healer just to try to protect the uh, super archers in case they take any damage uh, uh, from you know the Titan or anything around or any bombs or anything like that. But also like you'll notice through a little bit later in this attack that healer stays up and actually uh, protects some of the troops a little bit later in the attack. So really good opener here with the super archers to get through there, get the town hall down, get the mono down. Uh, they got the scatter in that compartment, got the queen in that compartment, but also they set up the pathing really nicely for this Electro Titan Bowler Smash. This is something a little bit unconventional, that's for sure. Um, I, w I wasn't sure what to think when I saw this one, uh, but he, he kind of just yellows it all in here and it works out for him even the royal champion is in doesn't save the royal champion until later like you see sometimes on those smashes and since all the spells are done with since he used the super archer blimp all he does is really just set it and forget it use those hero abilities notice that healer's up over here working helping out that yeti so that yeti can get a little bit more the super archers are still up through there just cleaning up through the base you gotta love it the bowlers do kind of get left behind here but he had enough force working through here those healers do a really nice job so he can just push through here and the funnel was set from that super archer blimp so this one a little bit unconventional of a super or a, yeah super archer electro titan bowler smash but it works out really nicely for van uh i, I wanted to show this one off jj pointed it out for me because it's uh it's just so unconventional this isn't something you'd really expect to see uh being ran with the bowlers you know the bowlers are the bowlers are really what throws it off we've seen super archer electro titan smash before that's for sure but those bowlers in there pretty interesting but you see here he gets through he can swag out the queen ability and it's just a really clean attack here this was during the last war so gg's to van not gonna lie i was tempted to show you guys one of my super bowler smashes i love me some me but my man hockey's got us covered with a super bowler smash uh he's been doing this and doing really well with it it's my go-to attack right now so i love seeing a really solid super bowler smash especially on this style base like really you have access to the middle pretty easily and the funnel is really easily to be established here use the flinger on the one side use the warden on the other and all he's got to do is wall breaker there and then jump through this middle section and then all he's got to do is really just rage up use his warden ability and just crush this base nice use of the yeti down there to distract the multi-mortar so that his flinger doesn't take too much damage it does take a couple shots there from the multi-mortar but not enough that it's really going to hinder anything does a good job of pulling the warden back before he gets too far away. That is one thing. I think I saw this in the comments yesterday of uh, my warden's not following my troops. How does that? How do you do that? Well, you got to put those troops like in that or like if you see that circle around the warden, you need to put those troops kind of close to that. Not necessarily inside of it, but pretty close to it. From there, he just jumps in through the middle, like I mentioned, throws down the rage spells. He'll go ahead and use that warden ability to protect everything as they're taking a lot of damage in here even uses that invis i like using the invis, invis here a lot too that's something i tend to do a lot with this attack where you're going into a high damage area uh, and you just make your troops invisible so they're not going to take too much pressure now this town hall poison is going to work on these troops quite a bit but they've already gutted out so much of the base that it's not going to matter too much he still has queen ability he still has royal champion that just got deployed here from the bottom not to mention he's got his flinger with his clan castle troops which are super minions in there if you haven't tried super minions in your flinger on a super bowler smash try it trust me you'll love it that's my well oh, that's my favorite thing right there uh not only like does it do a good job of cleaning up and it can get some defenses or if there's like a ground bow it does really good but there's been times where my super minions inside of my uh flinger can save the town hall in case like everything goes by the town hall so something to consider there but this was just really clean really well executed from hockey again man I love seeing these attacks. I'm just disappointed we didn't get the, get the promotion. 
uh, too many mistakes, and I, I feel really guilty about it because I had a couple one stars that shouldn't have been one stars. I was just lazy, and I didn't like you know I didn't run the proper plan. Like I, I ran super bowlers on like corner teasers that I don't do well with on super bowlers. I don't know why I did that. And then the the one attack I tried to get too cute, and I I tried to jump sneaky archers into a clan castle. It was just a hot mess. So I feel a little bit guilty about my mistakes, but. It's a team effort at the end of the day. You know, we could have done better uh, on the triples. There's a lot of close attacks. It is what it is. Unfortunately, we do stay in Champions League 3 just by one star, but it was a really good week. Shout out to the guys for all the work and effort they put in this week. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this. Let me know how your clan did in CWL down there in the comments. You guys have a great day. Keep on Clash Bashing.